Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. With central banks throughout the world continuing to print more and more money and throw it into the system, the Federal Reserve very much included in that mix, there's a lot of concern about where to actually put your money and how to protect it against inflation. Many people, including myself, believe that inflation is on the horizon, or at least it's likely to be on the horizon, and we've certainly been seeing a lot, in my view, throughout the financial system already, but that's up for debate since it depends on how you measure inflation. The fact of the matter is, there's a lot of money printing going on, and the likely result of printing more dollars when you're not producing as much stuff is inflation. But this begs the question, if you think that inflation is coming and you think the dollar is gonna lose value, how do you short the dollar? That seems like a very winning trade in that situation. After all, the dollar, like any other currency, is an asset and that asset's value can change in time due to a variety of different factors. And if you're very confident that that asset is gonna go down, you'd probably wanna heavily consider shorting it if you're that confident in that bad result. And if you short something when the value goes down, then you come out profitably on the other side. Some people might be quick to point out that if you want to short the dollar, you can do something as simple as buying an inverse US dollar index, which will do the opposite of whatever USD, which is on the foreign exchange market, will do the opposite of what that's doing. So if the dollar went down on the foreign exchange market, then you would be up. However, this is a very limited scope on what I'm really trying to get at. That's because something like USD on the foreign exchange market is comparing the dollar to other currencies. It's not really looking at what the dollar can actually get you in value. So if the Federal Reserve is devaluing the dollar, but some other bank, like the European Central Bank, is devaluing the euro, then it doesn't really look like they're changing in value that much relative to each other but both currencies might be losing value to everything else. Because the dollar, just like any useful currency, can buy you a whole lot more than just other currencies. It buys you stuff. That stuff might be goods and services, it might be investments. That's what the real value of a currency provides. You don't really care about just exchanging it one for one with some other fiat currency. You wanna see what that dollar's purchasing power is. That's the key metric we're trying to look at when we're talking about shorting the dollar. What can you do to preserve purchasing power over the future rather than letting inflation eat away at the value of the dollar. And the central lesson here is that investing in anything outside of the dollar is inherently shorting the dollar. And that's where we get into one of two major ways to really short the dollar beyond just comparing it to other currencies. And that's investing in anything outside of the dollar. It's a very broad strategy. If you think $1 today is going to be worth less than $1 tomorrow, then you want to invest that dollar into something that will preserve its value relative to everything else. This could be a great business with a stock investment. This could be a piece of real estate, a real tangible asset, that's not really gonna change its inherent value. All that might change is the monetary value, but that depends on the currency strength. In the same way, a lot of people invest in commodities like gold, which don't really change in their inherent value, but what does change is the value of the currency relative to it. So the value of the gold or whatever it is might not really be going up, but the value of the currency is going down and gold or whatever it is, is hopefully gonna preserve that value. So that works like a short on the dollar. As the dollar is losing value, you are preserving your purchasing power and in monetary terms, you're actually gaining. Because no matter how many currency units are out there, things with real value will preserve some sort of value. The question is, how do we actually calculate and weigh that value and then transact using some currency to explain that value? But the value itself is locked in. A home is always gonna be a home. It's gonna be able to provide shelter. That is value caked in. The question is, what price do we pay for the home? And price changes for a variety of reasons. And a large part of pricing changes, at least over the long term, are due to monetary policy and and inflation. And if you invest in a well-priced business today that has pricing power of its own, then when inflation kicks in, that business can raise its own prices as well, and then the stock value should climb at least in nominal terms with inflation. So that is another way to short the dollar. The value of the dollar is going down, yet the value of the business is staying the same, and in nominal terms, you are going up in value. I am kind of using value and price here interchangeably. You have to be kind of careful with that. When I say value, what I'm predominantly meaning is the actual inherent value of something. And you could sort of use that as like units of pleasure or units of good or units of usefulness. And that unit can be redefined with whatever the currency is. So one house might be worth $100,000. It might be worth many more of that in yen. It might be worth many more of that in whatever other currency. But the fact of the matter is the value of that home is the same in any case. It doesn't matter what currency you price it in. So it follows that if the dollar or some currency loses value, the property itself should not 
spot and that delta there is your short. But buying valuable assets is only one way to short the dollar and the other big way is actually one that many Americans might not even realize that they're doing and that's taking out fixed rate debt. And I say fixed rate because typically when you get a lot of inflation and currency devaluation, interest rates will rise to kind of make up for that. It depends on how much shenanigans the Federal Reserve or the central banks are doing, but I'm going to use fixed rate debt here to keep the example simple. Sticking with homes, let's say you buy a $200,000 home with a $100,000 mortgage, so you put $100,000 down. A $100,000 mortgage is fixed rate for 30 years, we'll say at 3.5% interest. This means that the price of that money is fixed at 3.5% interest. It's not going to go up even if inflation ramps up or if anything happens. It is going to be 3.5% interest for as long as you have that mortgage. But what if the annual inflation rate is 5%? That is, the dollar becomes worth 5% less than it was before. And we'll say that the home follows inflation in its price, so it goes up by 5% to $210,000. But here's where the shorting of the dollar occurs. Because of the 5% inflation, that implies that dollars are worth at least 5% less than they were before. And you are now paying back your loan, your fixed rate loan that's only 3.5% interest. You're paying it back with cheaper dollars. And if the rents that you can get on that home are now 5% greater as well, your costs are fixed at that 3.5% interest rate on your mortgage. So now you're paying back with the greater income that you're getting from rent and using it to pay back the loan with those cheaper dollars. And if you get a longer period of inflation where it's 5 to 10% per year for a few years, the value of that debt's going to get whittled down very quickly because the value of the dollars they can use to pay it back with are becoming a lot cheaper. Meanwhile, the cash you invested into the property, the $100,000 down payment, that is going up with inflation as well. So the price of the real estate is going up, but the price of the debt is staying the same and it's actually losing its inherent value. It's debt destruction via inflation. And even if everything else goes up at the same exact time, your salary, your grocery bill, everything's going up at that 5% inflation rate or whatever the inflation rate is, the value of that debt is fixed. The debt payment is not going to change. So even as your income rises and as your expenses climb up with it too, your housing expenses are staying right there. And that's working as a short on the dollar. And that's because you're borrowing one year's dollars and paying them back with dollars many years down the line that would be theoretically worth less thanks to inflation. And the inherent value of that home has not changed. It still provides the same amount of shelter. It still can get you the same amount of rent compared to the rest of your expenses. The only thing that hasn't gone up with inflation is your debt. Instead, relatively speaking, it's gone down in value since everything else is going up. So those are the two big ways to short the dollar. One is to buy assets that will appreciate with inflation, even if their inherent value doesn't change, at least their nominal price will. And the other way is to take out debt in dollars, preferably fixed rate debt, which will lock in your interest rate and will lock in that price for the long term. Of course, we can't tell what the future will actually hold and no strategy is foolproof and this isn't financial advice by any means, but I hope this gets you thinking at least about what shorting the dollar actually means. In my view, it's not looking at what it's doing relative to other currencies, it's looking at what it's doing relative to what you can actually buy with it. If you can buy less stuff with the same amount of dollars as before, you are losing to inflation. But if you can maintain that value, preserve it, in a quality asset or can otherwise preserve it in debt to where the value of that debt's going down and you're using the debt to buy an asset that appreciates, of course, then you can short the dollar and would be far less likely to fall at the hands of inflation and instead could potentially benefit from it. And if you get a lot of inflation, the value of that debt will become very little and the value of that home should stay the same. So you're getting that nice delta between what the value of the debt has fallen to versus what the value of the home has maintained. If you buy assets that maintain their value through inflation or you take out debt in dollar terms, and then can pay back that debt with cheaper dollars, you are essentially shorting the dollar and you're benefiting from inflation or at least you're not succumbing to it. Anyways, that's all I've got for today. If you like this video, definitely like it since that would help the channel out a lot. And if you like this sort of content about personal finance and investing, then definitely subscribe since I put out new videos every single week and wouldn't want you guys to miss out. And check out some of the free stuff in the affiliate links in the description below. That would definitely help the channel out a lot as well. But until next time, take care.